on the hour. So Julie and Jessica and Abby, do you want to get started? Yes. Um, so hello, everyone. And good afternoon, good morning, or good evening um, from wherever you happen to be. Thank you so much um, for joining us. I'm Abby, and along with, um, oh, brain's gone blank, Julie, <laughs> Jessica, um, we make up a tiny fraction of the uh, people operations team at GitLab. And thank you so much um, for taking the time to join us. And I am going to go ahead and share my screen. Okay, so um, we did put this link, if somebody, Julie or Jessica, if you can post the link to this page um, in the chat, that would be good, just in case people um, want to follow along. Um, so I'm looking at on this page, which is going to act um, as our agenda for this session. So um, I'm going to be talking very, very briefly, um, just to introduce a little bit about the summit, a little bit of the background. Then I'm going to pass over to Julie, who's going to go through the responsibilities as a leader and the be conscious section. And then we're going to open it up. And we've asked um, three managers um, to give their insights about when they attended the summit and what they've learned and any advice that they have, particularly for um, some of our new managers and leaders. And they are um, Pitch. Barbie and hopefully Lee if he can make it, but um, we'll see how that goes. Um, if not, one of you two will have to talk a bit more or we can ask, pick on someone um, and ask them to uh, share um, their thoughts. So um, before we get started, um, I do want to show you a little video. And for those of you who attended the summit um, in Mexico back in January 2017, you might be familiar with what I'm about to show you. Um, I'm gonna play it and then I'll explain um, a bit more about what it is and why this is happening um, afterwards. And I apologize, I wish I had a very seamless transition, but I don't, I do have to disconnect my headphones um, very quickly so you can hear it. So just bear with me one second. Okay, I hope you can all hear me again. You just give me a quick thumbs up or wave or whatever. Yep, yeah, cool, thank you. Um, so just to go back, um, a little bit of context. Um, so what happens at each summit usually is Sid will issue a challenge um, to everybody. And in return, if that challenge is completed, he will do something, um, usually something um, crazy um so that's why i wanted to to show um that video there we go uh so moving swiftly on um <laughs> so um just to give um people a bit of background um so the summit occurs every nine months or so and um with, it's uh, a great opportunity to get FaceTime um, with one another. Of course, we work remotely, so actually having that FaceTime um, is really, really important and really valuable. And it also gives us a chance to interact with other people across GitLab, not just people um, in our own team, and also um, the community as well. And it is a really, really cool um, differentiator for GitLab and an investment in everybody and our values. 
And I want to sort of throw some numbers at you because um, we love data. So you may not realize this, but as of July 25th, we have 258 team members and 81 significant others attending the summit. And that gives us a huge, impressive total of 339 people. But remember, that's as of January, uh, January? July uh, 25th. And roughly 50% um, of those people are attending for the first time. So we thought, given those numbers are very, very large um, in comparison to previous summits that we've done, um, we thought it would be a good, would be a good idea and helpful um, to talk about the summit from a leader's perspective. So um, the first thing I want to say is that the summit is not mandatory, um, but if you choose to go, you are um, expected and encouraged to attend and participate in the various events in the schedule. Um, we also understand that people need some downtime, um, but as a general rule, you and your team should be at the various events, meetings um, and sessions. Um, another thing I certainly noticed, because I've been to two summits myself, um, is it's really easy to get siloed and to interact with the people that you already know. Um, people in your own team, for example, even though, of course, you probably don't see your team um, in person that often, but um, it is an opportunity to reach out and meet other people um, across GitLab. And um, as a leader, you need to balance um, the interaction with your own team and make sure that you are setting the example and um, talking to other people um, as well, um, especially team members who have just joined GitLab. Um, they may be attending the summit, it may even be their first day, and we have had that happen before, um, and it can be a little bit um, overwhelming. Um, so yeah, anything, if you have new members in your team, just keep that in mind. Um, summit attendance isn't, is not required, so don't subconsciously hold it against people for not going to the summit. Um, it's also fantastic that we can bring our significant others but during the official summit days, um, this is a work event and workplace behaviors are expected. And we absolutely want to um, include everyone and invite everyone and for everyone to be safe and have fun. Um, but it is, it's not a vacation or a holiday or um, an incentive travel or anything goes in terms of actions and behaviors. There will be time for your team to meet over a meal, but other than that, there is no designated team time. And that is intentional. Again, we want people to interact with one another across teams um, and really get to know each other. So that is my bit finished and I will pass the microphone uh, over to Julie. Okay, great. Thank you, Abby. So I'd like to spend a little bit of time talking about responsibilities as a leader and make this interactive if possible. So let me cover a few things first very quickly and then I'll open it up for discussion. So hopefully everyone is very familiar with our values and permission to play behaviors as described in our handbook. Um, so our values describe the behavior that we expect from GitLabbers, how each of us should behave and what we can reasonably expect from others on a consistent basis. If you haven't looked over our values page lately, I encourage you to do so because there's a lot of detail and examples on each one of the values. And there's also some recent updates, including uh, a values hierarchy that shows how our values build off each other and are interrelated. So some additional responsibilities of a leader. Some of these are really obvious, but I think it's worth mentioning quickly. So, you know, just being welcoming and inclusive, introducing and including team members into conversations, particularly uh, brand new team members, especially if they seem reluctant or uncomfortable about adding themselves into the group. So look for people who are isolating themselves, maybe go talk to them one on one, invite them into a small group. They may be reluctant to join a group of 10 or 20 people, but a group of three or four people can feel more welcoming and less intimidating. Uh, as a leader, watch out for groups that are, you know, continually hanging out in silos. Don't be afraid to politely remind them to break it up, spread out, talk to other people that they don't know very well and encourage them to look for new faces. 
And finally, um, as someone in a leadership position, go ahead and consider yourself um, a host at the summit. So um, step up, initiate conversation, make introductions, um, help get some dialogue going. So if you go to breakfast, lunch, or dinner, maybe try to sit at a table with some unfamiliar faces or people that you don't know as well, or maybe even on the bus on the way to an excursion, you know, sit next to someone that you've never met before and, you know, just talk about anything. It doesn't have to be about work. You can ask about their family, their hobbies, their summer vacation, um, anything like that. So just kind of be on the lookout and, and think of yourself as a host during the summit. I think that'll go a long way. Um, this is our initial list, but I'd love to know what you guys think about this list and especially if anyone has anything to add. So feel free to speak up or throw it into the chat box and we'll make sure to collect all the content and add it um, as a handbook update. I, I know I'm speaking later, but I will say that, you know, Kathy asked a question here, did anyone encounter silos at the summit last, last time? And I will say that I feel like I did. I, I had only been at the company for about a month and I did feel uncomfortable walking up to a group that was already looking like they're having an exciting conversation or already know each other. And I felt like I'd be inserting myself and interrupting and not be welcome. So I think that taking that extra, extra action, when you see someone kind of walking and looking around and maybe feeling a little bit uncomfortable, even if maybe they're not feeling uncomfortable to invite someone's never a bad thing. If they're not, if they really were on their way to somewhere else, they can say that. Um, but uh, it would, it, I think it would be more welcoming if, 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 if you were in a group talking, you did look around a little bit to see who might want to join you. Great. Thank you, Barbie. Anyone else? Anything else to add to this list? I'm just looking in chat. Okay. Okay. If there's nothing else, then we will keep going. Um, and I'm going to switch gears and talk about what is typically the least favorite part of managing people in teams, and that is potential problems that can occur. So as we said earlier, we have just about 350 people coming to the summit. So this is employees, contractors, significant others, customers. And, you know, we are not used to spending a lot of time together in person. So it's very possible that problems of varying severity will occur and actually have occurred in the past. And so we just want to be proactive. We want to plan and prepare as best we can and know, you know, what to look for and what to do. So first and foremost, use the buddy system. Don't go anywhere alone. Um, keep an eye out for each other. If we each have a buddy and if we're each kind of looking out for each other, we can minimize our risk of some of the things on this list occurring. So I'm not gonna go through each one of these in a lot of detail, but there's a few that I wanna point out just very quickly. Um, so first of all, drinking. Um, be on the lookout for someone who's drinking too much. Um, and especially, and this is often unintentionally, someone who may be drinking alcohol while they may also be on some type of prescription medication or over-the-counter medication because that can certainly have unintended side effects. Um, and of course, it goes without saying that illegal drugs can be grounds for termination. So please don't even bring that to the summit. Um, accidents. This could range from someone who trips, falls, and hits their head at the hotel to a car accident uh, in a taxi or some kind of medical emergency. Um, mental state. So, you know, if someone has a broken arm or is on crutches or something like that, they're in a wheelchair, that's a visual impairment that we can see. But someone with any level of anxiety or depression, it, that's not always visible or obvious, but it's very real. And so being sensitive to that, and if you're concerned about someone, um, engage people up sooner versus later. We actually have a recent handbook update on neurodiversity, and it includes things like autism and ADD. It's a really good update. So if you haven't read that lately, I would encourage you to, to look over that. Two more things, um, cultural impacts. So, you know, we've got a lot of people, of different ages, different generations, 40 different countries coming together for five straight days. And, you know, that's going to create a different dynamic because most of us are just used to seeing each other for 30 minutes a day here and there on different Zoom calls. So um, I think if we can just model the behavior of seeking to understand, assuming positive intent, that will go a long way in having a really good five days. And we will talk more about cultural impacts um, in this session after the panel speaks. 
Um, and then the last thing I want to mention, and it sounds kind of obvious, and I debated even putting it in here because I certainly don't want to insult anyone, but um, people are proud of their country, and rightfully so. And, and I always feel like it's, it's my privilege to go to another country and to be a guest in another country and explore another part of the world. And so just being really mindful that we don't you know, make fun of things or criticize things about, the, about that country, whether it's public transportation, infrastructure, you know, whatever it may be. I know that sounds really obvious, but it can happen pretty easily just in casual conversation. So that's just something to keep in mind and be mindful of. Um, this is just a sample of problems that can occur. I'm sure that there's other things that we're not thinking of that we can add to this list. So if you do have some of those ideas, please let us know and we're happy to make those handbook updates or, or you can make them directly. Um, what to do and who to contact. So as a manager, it's important that you protect all team members and also the company. So if an incident occurs, no matter how minor it might be, please do contact people operations team immediately. Don't wait a few days or a few weeks after the summit. We would much rather prefer that you err on the side of caution and over communication. Um, our goal is to keep people safe, minimize risk to the company and to others and to handle things, you know, fairly timely and respectfully. So the sooner that we know, the better. Um, Barbie and I will be attending the summit. Um, unfortunately, Jessica can't attend because she's got two little kiddos starting school that same week. So she won't be at summit, but she will be available on Slack. So if any of these situations occur, if there's any type of emergency, um, don't hesitate to reach out to Barbie or myself. Um, and so let me see here. I'm going to do a quick time check. Okay. Um, at this time, we are going to hear from a couple of managers who have offered to speak and share some of their uh, tips and lessons learned. They've all attended at least one summit, and they will be available for Q&A um, during this session, but also after this session. So if you think of questions and you want to reach out to them at any time between now and the summit, don't hesitate to schedule a coffee chat and talk with them. Um, let me let you know who's gonna be on the panel. We are excited to hear, first of all, we'll hear from Richard Pigeon, who's our head of sales in EMEA. And then we'll hear from Barbie Brewer. Um, and then hopefully, if he's still able to be on the call, because I know he had a work emergency, we'll hear from Lee Matos, our support engineering manager. And they're each gonna speak for just a few minutes and then we'll open it up to Q&A for them. So, um, Pidge, I'm gonna turn it over to you and we do have a few questions on the screen if you wanna use those as your guide. Thanks, Julie. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, Richard, or people might know me as Pidge here. So I've been to a few summits, and and first thing I want to say is embrace the experience here, yeah? and en encourage your team to embrace the experience here. Yeah? We're we're really lucky as a company that we do this. Um, so it's really important that everyone embraces the opportunity we have. A visiting you know an, a new country, getting together as a team. Um, and meeting new people and new cultures. You know, learning about new cultures, I think, is really important. So make sure you encourage your teams to do that. Um, also, I think it's really useful for, for people to have a list of the people that, that, that they should be trying to find throughout the, 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 the summit, i.e. people that they, they don't necessarily speak to on a day-to-day -day basis that might help them in their, in their roles um, when they're back in, in, at home. Um, and you know there are ways that we can do that with gamification of that now having like a bingo card with a list of people that that when your team have managed to speak to all of the people on, on their list then they they get a prize or you know try to encourage that I think it's a really good 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 starting point also identify people that if there's been any any conflicts between any of the teams over the last few you know quarters it might be worth um, identifying the people that you should they should be speaking to. So I think that's important. Also identifying people that I think we've, we've touched that aren't used to networking experiences. A lot of the people we, we, that in our teams don't actually, haven't interacted with people in this environment for, for um, well, if sometimes ever. Um, so identify that, you know, help them um, with some of those networking skills. How do you, start a conversation you know you know how do you, you know how where do you come from where what team do you work in are you enjoying the summit what excursions you're going on them help them with sort of question open-ended questions that can start conversations going so i think that's that's also an important thing to to uh, recognize i think some of the challenges are is 
keeping your team separate, yeah, breaking your team up or encouraging it um, um, so that they don't stick together, especially the people that, that feel, people feel comfortable in their safe environment. And I think that's a challenge that we have. So encourage that, that mealtimes, they, they speak to new people and, and also identify the, the, the team members, not just in your team, in other teams. I think that we, we've touched on it today. You know, go and help and introduce people to other people that, that might be struggling uh, in the summit. And the other bit of advice is it is tiring. Yeah. You know, you do need that downtown, downtime. You know, speaking to people, networking for a five day period is exhausting uh, and don't underestimate um, how tiring that is. So try and encourage them to go on the excursions. They, they are really good fun. You know, Kirsten and the team do a fantastic job at organizing excursions. If they said they're going to, if they've signed up for the excursion, make sure they're there, make sure they're on time um, is, is one, my best bit of advice, but also take some down, down time. It's quite, you know, quiet time is really important during these events. Also make sure your team have put a sort of out of office uh, on their email so that people understand that they're going to have lim limited availability. Um, I think that's really important um for everybody to understand that, that they don't have to do the networking and do the work at, all at the same time otherwise it becomes a bit of a pressure pot um i don't know if there are any questions for me specifically i think we can go one off and then we can open the questions up to everybody and if anyone who has a question for a specific person on the panel or even not on the panel just on the on the call um, you can feel free to let us know that as well. Great. Okay. Barbie, do you want to go next? Sure. So I think that the summit is a wonderful activity and there's a lot of positive and good that comes from it. And our role as leaders here should be to focus on the positive and good coming from it and limiting the negative. And so I think that most of us, hopefully all of us have, uh, attended the anti-harassment training that went out earlier this year and Abby did a great job curating that for us. This applies during the summit. So we do have more responsibility at the summit to um, ensure that we're being respectful and that our team members are also being respectful. So as managers and leaders at this company, we don't get to turn a blind eye. We don't get to say, well, that's not my team, not my problem. We are all leaders and managers at this, this company. So it's critical that if we see something, we step in and we say something. And we all have a responsibility if we are an official manager of people here to do that. So it's, it's going to, it, it could affect your time. I want all of us on the call, I want all of our leaders and managers to have a great time too. But we can't forget that we have a responsibility to make sure that our team members are being treated respectfully. So I just wanna, you know, that's in addition to what's been already said on the call, I want to make sure that everybody understands that that's not just a, a nice thing for us to do. That is a legal, legally required thing for us to do. And if one of our managers or leaders participates in any behavior that is inappropriate or is a witness of it and does nothing, um, not only is that a terrible thing to do one, to one of our team members, but it also puts the company in a lot of legal liability. So I don't mean to be negative or come down hard, but I want to make sure we all know our responsibility here. Uh, at the summit, we will have the keynote. I will present. I will try to make everyone understand um, that this is a fun thing, but we have responsibilities too. But on this call, we want to be a little bit more serious in impressing the importance of that. So, and, and personally for me, and I'll probably say this at the summit too, but if I were to uh, have a bit of a good time and maybe drink a little too much at the summit, and someone on my team saw me doing that and, and maybe Julie's watching me and wow, Barbie's having a great time. And then she starts to wonder, okay, Barbie might be doing something that when she wakes up in the morning, she's gonna be embarrassed. And I would much rather have Julie come take me and say, hey, Barbie, maybe it's time to go back up to your room than to have her consoling me the next day when I remember what I did and I, and I feel highly embarrassed for it, right? So while Julie may not feel that I would appreciate her taking me out of the fun, uh, ideally the next morning I will, right? So, and Julie shouldn't have to do that for me because I'm her manager, but even, you know, let, let's be there for each other because the reality is, is when some of us do make these mistakes and we get caught up in the moment, we do have regrets afterwards. 
And it's a little bit like the cilantro in your teeth example, right? Except it's a little bit more uncomfortable to have that conversation because it's a little easier to say, hey, you have cilantro in your teeth um, than it is to say, hey, you're making a fool of yourself, right? <laughs> but um, the reality is, is it's okay to go to our, our team members and say, hey, looks like you're having a really great time, but you're, you're, you've got some questionable behavior going on, so it might be a good time to depart and, and go up to your room. And so let's just all look out for each other and our team members to make sure we're not, you know, the thing that people remember most aren't, isn't going to be something that we did that we regret. So uh, let's help each other in that way. So if Lee's still on the phone, I don't want to repeat yeah. a lot of what I've said, but I'll, I'll pass it off to Lee. Hi all, Lee Matos here. Very excited to talk. Uh, one of the prompts was something that surprised me the most about summits and I think how tall everyone is. Uh, you'll get a chance to see people actually standing up and uh, you may be <laughs> wondering, oh, I didn't realize you were so tall. Uh, it's a real thing, so be ready for that. Um, in support, we have to do a little bit of balancing where we do have work that has to happen and has to get done. So if you have a team where things do need to get done, make sure you take some time to coordinate that and be in front of that. Um, and that makes it really smooth and try and balance that. But one of the things there that was interesting was acknowledging and seeing my team uh, not working any better in the same room. It really helped highlight how well we work remotely. And that was a really interesting thing. So if you have a team that you have to do some work or something and you might feel that, or you might see that, or you might learn some things there more about the depth of your team, uh, that that was really interesting. I also think it's really good uh, early in the summit to kind of check in with your team and just say hi to everyone and set the tone and, and let them know that you're excited that they were able to come and, and the goal of the summit and, and kind of set an intention. Um, and, and as echoing what Barbie said, we're in charge of shepherding the culture of GitLab. And I think that that's something really important for everybody in this room to remember. Uh, and it's really funny because I'm echoing what Pidge said and it's just, we didn't even plan, we didn't even coordinate here, but um, really helping your team branch out is so important. I saw many opportunities last summit where my team was just spending a lot of time together because they were comfortable and encouraging them to branch out. And this summit, I'm thinking about some kind of challenge or some kind of thing um, to help the team branch out. And I think that that's really helpful. And the last thing that I would add that I think is really powerful that's helped me both summits, again, echoing something Pitch had said, um, be strategic. As a leader, this is an opportunity. You have all of the other people in this room. You probably need to talk to three or four of them uh, in some capacity, whether it's a new conversation or an ongoing conversation, whether it's bringing people together that haven't had an opportunity to talk. Um, take advantage of that because it is so, so, so powerful uh, to connect and have that connection. And especially in an environment that is uh, as refreshing as the summit is. So I want to definitely encourage that. Um, those are my thoughts, just echoing and wrapping up a lot of the similar themes and ideas. I thought it was really cool that uh, we were so aligned and, and it, it seems to be pretty universal that those are benefits from the summit. Open up the floor for questions. Sorry, before we carry on, can I just mention the importance of significant others? I think that they play such an important part in everyone's life that they feel, I think they probably feel a bit on the outside. So especially if your team members are bringing their significant others, make them feel really, really welcome. Go that extra mile to make them really feel really welcome. Introduce all the SOs together and, and make them feel part of us, the group, the culture. And, and so that it's almost we're in selling our culture to our significant others so that they feel that when they leave the summit that this is all right, yeah? This is why I suffer, you know, uh, all the things I go through for, from from my other half. So I think that's really important to stress from a leadership perspective because they'll be even more nervous than some of your team members that are new to the, your team. So sorry to, to bleat on. Yeah, I think it's really important. The goal of sig having significant others there is like they will determine whether people will stay with our company, sometimes even more than the people themselves. And it's very important that they feel welcome to everything. For example, maybe you should generate content sessions. Maybe we should go out of our way and also have votes from the significant others so that they feel part of that process. And I've, I've learned that if people aren't 
contributing, they'll mostly just keep their mouth shut. So I'm not worried about people distorting our process. I'm worrying about us living our value. Everyone can contribute. Um, how about suggesting that we'll do five nominated um, sessions that the SOs um, come up with and the user user generated I, content? I, session. I think we should not like try to make try to split the SOs off. I think we should. No, no, give no. I mean, a, a, I mean what, that everyone can go to, so they can recommend maybe five topics. If, if we're running 30, I don't know how many we're running. Yeah, I want to make sure that all the sessions are well attended. So instead of voting, I would just say we're not voting. We're staying ahead of time which sessions we want to attend. And okay. an SO vote counts as much as another one. Otherwise, you might have SO things that are overloaded of not that five is an arbitrary number. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that, that causes all kinds of planning and logistic problems. So I, yeah. I like the intention, but I, mm. let's, let's treat them as, as, as we treat our other team members. Or let's treat but, them as team members. Yeah, and include them. Lee did a great session with his um, SO last time, and you know they can all get involved and make sure they feel that they are allowed to be involved. Yeah. Yep, and not only voting, also suggesting content. Can we, uh, Kirsten? I know you're masquerading as me in the chat channel. Feel free to speak up, yeah. but can we uh, can we have them uh, uh, be part of that? The the suggesting and say, stating intent for the user generated content sessions. Um, so I just want to add yeah, something of course. about us. Um, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, Kristen, you're not. You're, Kristen, you're not. Sure, you're not. You're not coming through very. I'm just wondering, like logistically, like hand adding all 81 SOs. Sorry, I only had the, apparently the wrong uh, earbud in. Um, I think the only thing that we would struggle with is the adding for the adding of the topics to the UGC is the logistics of adding 81 emails. I mean, if people want, they can do this way to go, but uh, on voting for the, top, top, the topic soon. So I would suggest putting it on the team call, for example, and um, for tomorrow or Monday, and then ask the team to deliver within a week um, before the 13th, for example. So we have one week for voting and setting up the actual schedule for the UGCs. Like, yeah, we got to keep the timeline short. I love the idea, but okay, I'll, uh, I can send out an email to the whole team that if their SOs want to contribute to a topic with a specific deadline so they have it in writing and they can forward it to their SOs. Um, and then um, Kirsten, your, your audio is garbled. Yeah, we'll discuss it. Yeah, we'll, we'll yeah Kirsten, let me talk because your, your audio is not looking too well. Uh, I'm not sure we can remove Kirsten, um, but Kathy, go ahead with what you have to say. Sure. Um, I just want to share at the last summit, that was my first week at GitLab, so I met a ton of people, it was awesome. Um, I ended up having dinner with the SO of one of the GitLabers, and she related to me that, you know, her spouse was pulled into so many meetings that she's often alone. Um, so I just wanted to share that. I felt very sorry for her. Um, this was dinner into board gaming night, like the whole time. So I tried to make her feel welcome, but you know, she was pretty much spending the summer alone. Yeah, Kathy, I would add that I think um, one thing we did on customer success uh, in, in Greece uh, was made sure to introduce the SOs to each other. So kind of like we were talking about if someone's alone, uh, you know, making sure to invite them in, we should do this again, treat SOs the same way, uh, make sure they, it, it's great if they can meet other SOs. So if they're not interested in a UGC, they have people that they might know and be able to, you know, hang, spend time with. Um, that, that's, that's how a lot of the SOs worked. Yeah, I also yeah. think depending, you know, as, as leaders here at GitLab and depending on the comfort for your SO and all of our SOs are different, but I know that I specifically asked Greg to also be a friend to the other SOs out there and to show leadership as well. Now he may not be a leader at GitLab, but he is my husband. And so 
I feel like we're a team um, at these events. And so I did ask him to put himself out there for other SOs as well. So if your SO is the type of SO who would, would enjoy that and would enjoy being an ambassador, um, that's great. But it shouldn't be just SOs, right? I asked him to also be friendly and, and talk to um, team members as well. So I think that letting our SOs know that they have a role to play in making everyone feel comfortable and making sure everyone can contribute is okay as well. Again, not their responsibility, but if it's an activity that they would enjoy, I think it's okay to enlist them in that. I also think that it's great when we see someone who does seem to be alone, um, that we're okay having a conversation with them and to see if that's where, where they wanna be. I, I, I actually really do enjoy being alone sometimes. And if you saw me at the summit in a little corner reading my Kindle for 30 minutes, that's probably my refueling time because I because I need that sometimes and it's and it's okay. But it makes you feel really good if you come up and say, hey, would you like to join us? And if I have the freedom to say, actually right now I'm okay, right? And that we we set the tone that both answers are okay. And that you're not gonna be penalized if you say, yeah, no, I'm okay right now. Or if you say, yeah, I'd love to join you. It, either, either response is a good one. And, uh, but the fact that I knew I was welcomed feels good too. So I think as much as we, as much as we try to extend that and we overextend it almost, right? To the point where for me personally, I have to do it to the point where I'm feeling uncomfortable to know I'm doing it enough. If I'm in my total comfort zone, that probably means I'm not doing it enough for me. Now you may be different for, for my SO, he won't have that feeling. It's really natural to him. So he probably won't ever feel like he's doing it too much. But if you know you are one of those people who tend to hold back, then push yourself a little further than you normally would. There were some questions earlier in the chat. I'm not sure if we snagged all of those. I'm trying to find them. One was about an investor session. I guess there was Vili presented in Cancun. People were asking about that. If we're coming, up, yeah, we're coming up with the keynote now. Um, Vili and Bruce will not be in, in, um, in Cape Town with us, but we are currently solidifying what that will look like. We don't have enough planned right now that I feel comfortable saying what it is because it might change. Uh, but we would like to have some kind of customer or investor participation in that. We just don't have it solidified yet. In terms of the question that was originally asked by um, Elsa and SOs, including topics, um, I did ping Kirsten. We can very easily just remind everybody what the deadline is for submitting topics and say, and if your SOs have topics they'd like to submit, please include those too. Not, not a big deal. And uh, when you're indicating which topics you would like to attend, feel free to also put in input for your SO. And if we can do it technologically wise so they can do it themselves, that's fine too. But it's not complicated and it's not, it's not a big deal. I saw a question in there from Eric Johnson that I think is good. Uh, I've heard a lot of questions from my managers about whether or not it's okay to schedule a team meeting. Maybe we should get a conversation going about that when we enter Q&A. And I think from my side, I can answer, I think the intention is we should be grouping as all of GitLab as much as possible and interacting with as many people at GitLab as possible. But uh, I think that you know, there's space and time for your team to get together and have a little bit of an opportunity to connect as a team. But the intention is like greater GitLab connecting. I'm sure yeah, sure I think, yeah, I think, yeah, I think that Lee is correct. Last year, we specifically said no meeting with your teams. Um, this year, we have time built in for one of the dinner sessions to be with your team. Uh, I think that's great. You should utilize that time with your team. But having team meetings above and beyond that, keep in mind that you're either taking away time with a larger group and or time for them to have that time they may need. Um, and I also don't want to set the tone that we need to meet here because working remotely is not effective. If that's the case, that's a larger conversation we should have. But if you need to get your team together at the summit in order to accomplish something, other than bonding, getting to know each other, building relationship and trust, um, then you, you, we have to think about how we're working together as a team. And that could be a good indicator that something's not going right if we have things we need to accomplish that we can't accomplish outside of being in the same room together. So I, I, I'd like to, to iterate that because really the, um, the really point of this is for us to, to acknowledge that remote work is wonderful, it's great, but sometimes just being in the same room with someone means you can have um, a little bit more fun, a little more conversation, a little more bonding. 
And that's really what the goal for this is, not accomplishing tasks. And if there's accomplishing task type meetings that need to take place, please refrain from doing that at the summit. Hey, Barbie, we do have a couple questions in chat and I've been, I've been trying to write a bunch of them down, but they've, they've reposted at the bottom. So um, one of them is um, Sitter Kirsten asked, should we add a line that we have a zero tolerance policy for disruptive behaviors in, in the be conscious section? So things like zero tolerance for illegal drugs or whatever. Um, so I don't know if we want to talk about that now or offline, but being really clear on what, if we do have a zero tolerance policy, what would those things be and look like? Um, so that might be something we want to think about further. Yeah, I would say let's link to the code of business conduct and, and refer that to our kind of zero tolerance thing. Zero tolerance in relation to the summit is um, there are certainly are some things that are zero tolerance. I think we have those things covered in our harassment sections in the code of conduct. Uh, beyond that, it, it, I wish this was this was this was always super clear and always black and white. But nine times out of ten, when we do have problems at these events, it's not that simple. Uh, so, um, so I, I just I want to be very clear that if you do see something happening, we need to get involved. We've had situations where there are um, underlying issues that we weren't aware of that have affected the outcome of the course we take, and there. It, it is complex and it's complicated that as much as we can help our team members avoid getting into that situation in the first place is the is the best line right you can see we all know we see we see that team member who's knocking a few back and getting a little silly and 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 we don't want to be that person to say hey you might want to slow down but you're really doing them a favor if you if you give them that help when they're when they're going too far would be one example um if there's things inappropriate jokes inappropriate comments just you know, address that quickly. Don't don't wait to see how bad it gets. Right, Ad address those things quickly, and let's avoid the extreme situations as much as we can. But uh, but yes, Julie, we can add a, a link to the code of conduct and harassment to the handbook, and and say there's zero tolerance for these things. But again, it's very gray area in, in a lot of these circumstances. Okay, um, I want to be mindful of time. We have about eight minutes left. Um, there are a few, we, we are, I'm looking through the chat, so is Jessica and Abby, and we will get a list of, of everything. There's a, there's a request for um, cell phone numbers for like myself, Barbie, that kind of thing. So we'll make sure to get that. There's also a request for hospitals and trauma centers. So we can work with uh, Kirsten on that. So we'll make sure to go through and pull anything else um, out of here. I do want to, um, if, there, if there's nothing else right this minute, I do want to shift it over to Jessica to kind of um, let, it, let you guys know about a few additional resources that we might not have time to cover right now, um, but that she can at least point out and, and uh, close us off. Um, Julie, just to interrupt quickly, another thing you should add to that list is um, maybe a local doctor rather than hospital in an emergency. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, Jessica. Okay, so another thing we wanted to talk about um, in related to the summit is that we have, I mean, we mentioned before, we have a lot of different cultures coming together. We have 40 different countries, um, different personalities, and that does create for various different environments. And one of those things to think about is we have introverts, extroverts, and ambiverts who are all going to be joining together. And if you look at what the definition of some of these are, you know, an introvert is someone who is shy and prefers a calm, minimally st stimulating environment. I'm sure the summit is not a calm, you know, minimally stimulating environment. And we have our extroverts who are outgoing and overtly expressive people. And then we have those ambients, ambiverts, who are actually a person whose person has a balance of both extroverts and introvert features. Um, before we kind of talk about you as a leader engaging with these different personality types, I want to do a really quick unscientific poll here. And if people could go into chat and put down, you know, I for introvert, E for extrovert, or an A for ambivert. I'd be curious to see what we kind of think our own team is made of. A lot of A's. I consider myself an introvert who has to push herself to be an extrovert. Kind of like Barbie mentioned, if I'm comfortable, I've not pushed myself out of that comfort zone. So, you know, um, <clears throat> oh yeah, we got a lot of, not as many I's as I expected, quite a few A's and E's. But as you can see, we have a lot of different personalities among our leadership team. We can imagine the different personalities among our, all, our entire company. 
You know, and according to Psychology Today, researchers estimate that extroverts actually make up 50 to 74% of the population. We kind of refer to these folks as social butterflies and they thrive under that social stimulation. You know, the um, other 16 to 50% are consists of introverts or ambiverts who get their energy from having time alone. So when you think about that, 16 to 50% of the team member spouses or customers who attain the summit actually fall in that introvert category. And you as leaders, and I think Pidge talked about this, um, especially around getting people involved, you guys have a um, responsibility to figure out how to engage with these employees and make sure that they are also you know, having a great summit. We know the extroverts are gonna have a great time. You know, some of the things that you can do to help your introverts engage is give them time to think and plan and prepare as much as possible. I know we don't have the agendas for everything, but where we can, let's make sure we give them that information so they have time to actually think about their ideas and present. Um, and also remember, silly games and some team building exercises will be really uncomfortable for these employees. That doesn't mean we can't have fun and we're gonna do them, but we need to have a balance at our means to make sure it's not so geared heavily toward those extroverts. Also respect space. You know, introverts are known to be easily stimulated and that's easily tired. If an employee, re, you know, declines a social event that's not mandatory after a long day of meetings, respect that. If you ask them twice and decline, let it go. Um, they're not expected to be there 24 hours a day. They can come for 20 minutes, leave, but just make sure that you respect that. In that same line, it's if you see a team member continuing to pressure someone, oh, come on, come on, come have a drink. Let's go here, let's go there. And the person's clearly not wanting to do that. Step in and make sure you can be that person's champion. So, you know, um, I think Julie mentioned the beginning, also remember your fellow managers and peers who are introverts, um, who are introverts. So going to the bar to drink every night and talk about business can actually mean that you're leaving out valued members of the team. So let's shake it up a bit. You know, try finding ideas to include others. We have um, breakfast, we have lunch, we have dinner. Think of other ways to be more exclusive, inclusive. In the spirit of time, I want to talk really quickly um, about cultural differences. As we mentioned, we've got 40 different companies coming together. Things um, can mean one thing in one part of the world and definitely mean something else in a different part of the world. So let's just be conscious of that and assume best intent. I'll give you a really quick example. Shaking your head in a horizontal direction in most country means no, while in India it actually means yes. The okay sign in Western European countries can actually mean, you know, Barbie and I are divers. We know it means, you know, thumbs up, everything's okay. In Japan, it's about talking about money. In some other countries, it's actually um, a pretty offensive sexual sign. But we need to actually just assume best intent and not assume that someone is trying to, someone is, is offending. You know, there's a, um, a website called the Center of Intercultural Competencies. You can go there and take a look at that. And they've got some really great examples of different things that different cultures do. And the last thing we really want to talk about before we go to any Q&A is lost in translation. You know, translation tends to sound easier than it is. People often think it's just about a matter of replacing each source word with the corresponding translated word, and then you're done. You know, unfortunately, translation is much more complicated than that. There can be multiple ways, sometimes even dozens, of saying the same thing in another language. You add things to that like syntax, grammar, and any other number of examples of linguistic nuances, and the potential for mistakes is huge. So we want to assume best intent from our fellow team members, and we can use this as an opportunity to start a new dialogue. So I just want us to be really careful about you know, how, we, how some things are translated. We've got exactly a minute left. I want to, like I said, be conscious of time but we are really excited about Summit. It's a huge investment to bring people together. We wanna to leverage that. You know, again, as a manager, you, know, you are ambassadors. We want you to lead by example. Um, and remember that we are guests in South Africa and we expect our, not only our managers, but all of our team members, significant others and customers to um, act that way. Um, but mostly of all, we want everyone to have a great time, be safe, learn, and great connections at the Summit. Are there any other questions? I went through that pretty quick. We have some information on the website about extroverts, introverts, cultural translations, um, but any other questions? If not, we will, we will give you exactly a minute back. And check the weather before you go so you know how to pack. Thanks, Jessica. All right, I guess that's it. Thanks everybody, have a great day. Thanks.
Thank you.